was, um, I went there until uh, I was in the 11th grade. My father was a minister. He had finished at this school, high school plus at this black Baptist school in Selma, Alabama that had been uh, erected and established because there were no white colleges that any black person could attend. So therefore, uh, he went there and he wanted all his children to go through there, which we all five did. Of the children and me being the oldest. I only went there one year and that was my senior year and I graduated there in 1954. So you know I'm in, in 1944, so you know that's been a long time ago, 65 years since I finished high school. But anyway, uh, I then stayed there two more years and finished junior college in 46. I met this gentleman there, this Reverend Motley, whom I had said we got to be good friends, but I had said as a child, all this is kind of preliminary because I don't have no title to no speech. I'm just giving you a story. I had said as a child, never would I marry a priest. I am not going to marry a priest. Because my mother always said, now you all are the preacher's cheer, and you have to be examples. You can't play ball on Sunday. You can't go to dances and you can't, we just couldn't do anything. Well, if you're nine or 10, 11 years old, what do you care about being an example to anybody, you know? But anyway, uh, I met this minister at this Baptist school around 1946 when I graduated from junior college. Well, it was no, connection necessarily with, with him and me then. And then um, after I had come back to Monroe and taught there a little while as a substitute teacher, uh, in 1949, I was called by the president of Selma University to come and finish our school term for a teacher that just walked off. So I'm not going to go all into that, but I will say that was when this Reverend Motley, who was in college by that time, began to get on my, I would say nerves. <laughs> he began to talk to me, and among the things that he said was, um, I was 22 years old then, so you can count if you want. <coughs> He said, I, I want you for my wife. I said, man, what you talking about? I, I, I said, there's one thing I'm not going to do. I'm not going to marry no preacher. I said, no, no offense to you. You're a fine man. I like you. But no, no preacher. But anyway, the Lord knows what he wants. And I was, even at 22, I, I, I had enough Christiana had been baptized by my father years before. I went in and prayed to the Lord. I said, now, Lord, you know I don't want to marry a preacher. I said, this man's a fine man, got a church. Didn't have no car back that <laughs> in the middle of I don't think Crystal would marry one night if he didn't have a car. <laughs> but anyway, uh, to try to hurry that on and get to this other part, um, I said, Lord, if I am to marry this man, you do it. That's, that's why my motto is, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. At 22, I had sense enough to know that. And I said, but I'm going to do the Gideon on you, Lord. If you want it done, you got to show me. You're going to have to do it yourself. And he did it himself. Here comes this preacher up there that weekend with the license from the wrong county. <laughs> because, you know, if you're going to get married in uh, Clark County, you get your married license in Clark County. You don't go over here in Floyd County and get them to get married in Clark, 
in God kind of so. But anyway, I said, I ain't doing nothing to help him. He even had my name spelled wrong on the license. <laughs> Came there that weekend on the bus, and my father said, I, said, I had asked my father about him. I said, you know this Motley man? But, oh yeah, we meet together in the conventions and things. Motley's a good man. He's a fine man. I, I recommend him. I said, oh Lord, help us. <laughs> so anyway, we got married June 1st, 1949. And uh, things went along just like ordinary. Um, Marriage is due. I had my first son, oh, uh, about 11 months, I think, after we were married, and that's the past of guilty age here now. Had the other one 15 months later, pastoring in Atlanta now. And things went on. I had finished junior college. I had gone to that, what they call the Alabama State College for Negroes and done my, almost all of my junior year. So by that time, um, Doug Martin Jr. was about four, and uh, uh, my other son was about three. And my husband had been called to a church in Mobile just about the time the, the act came out, the Board of Education, Brown versus Board of Education. So, my husband said to me, he said, now is a good time. They've desegregated the schools. You've always wanted to finish college, so now you can go to school and finish college, and you can go every day. You can just drive out there every day. I said, no offense. <laughs> what I'm fixing to say is not ugly, but... I, I, I said, I don't know nothing about white folks. <laughs> I said, I don't know nothing about white folks. Well, I always call them Reverend. I said, you can't get me to go out there with these white folks. I said, I'm not going to go anywhere where I can't be uh, number one or number two in the class. And they said they are so smart. And the only white person that I knew was the Watkins man. <laughs> The Watkins man came once a month, and my mother got Watkins sad, which I, peace perhaps remember, no, I still got some more, I get Watkins sad myself. And so I said, uh, I'm not going. You can't make me go. We went, that was, that was September of 1954. And my husband stayed on my back a whole semester, and I held out a whole semester. I said, I ain't going. I'm not going out there. I, I, don't, I just don't want to go, Reverend. He didn't relent. He said, send for your transcript, and send that transcript to Spring Hill College. Well, trying to be, by this time, an obedient wife. <laughs> I sent for the transcript, sent it to Spring Hill College. They looked at it, and the dean called me up one day and said, Ms. Martin, you got a wonderful transcript here, but the school that you finished from is not accredited, and we can't accept it, but you, you're going to have to start as a freshman. I said, now, I'm 29 years old, and I ain't starting as no freshman. <laughs> not when I, and I said it just like I've been saying it now. I said, I'm not going to start as no freshman. I said, I got two little children. I put in a lot of time at these schools. I am not going back to a freshman. I just wait till it's an opportunity for me to go to the Alabama State College for Negroes and get my other uh, year and a half. And uh, he said, wait a minute, not so fast, Ms. Miley. I think we're going to have a meeting on you. <laughs> So they called in the dean and all the officials of the college, Dr. Cooper, and that, that were, uh, uh, had to make decisions, you know. And they looked at my transcript, and the next day they called me and said, Ms. Marty, you have such a wonderful transcript. 
said, you just got a wonderful transcript. 